Hello everyone, so welcome to the new session of tutorials on DB2. I hope you have successfully completed all the previous uh, sessions on COBOL, GCL, VSAM and TSO ISPF. I hope you had listen to my all sessions of videos if you have any doubts or concerns on those videos you can always text me or you can email me on the email id provided i would try to reply at the earliest and make sure you are getting all the concepts right okay so with that said we are entering into the new topic that is uh, db2 so I hope how many people might have heard of the different databases like SQL Server or uh, Microsoft SQ Microsoft MS MS SQL and uh, Oracle Sybase. So there are different kinds of a database you might have heard, right? So similar to that, so DB2 is another database. So where it most of the mainframe data uh, bases I mean mainframe the main most of the mainframe sites so we use this database especially for an online transaction processing or many other uh, scenarios okay so so with that said we'll go to the introduction part DB2 is also in a relational database management system which is the product of again uh, I can say IBM so it is a subsystem so we have we are working on uh, MBS operating system that is that OS operating system and in that so we think it is a subsystem so of the MBS DB2 will support all SQL queries I would request you to please uh, brush up all the SQL queries so if you have already uh, aware of SQL if not I'm going to explain uh, in the upcoming videos on the SQL part as well so like creating a table deleting a table or uh, writing the inserting the records updating the records and so on okay so we are going to discuss those details as well okay so where does the DB2 works so DB2 works with uh, CICS DSO commands and also you can use it in a uh, uh, batch programs right so let's talk about RDBMS so what is RDBMS? RDBMS stands for Relational Database Management System. Unlike files, when we are working with a sequential file, what we had, so we had uh, our columns and rows, right? Each row was uh, identified by a row name or the record ID and the columns were identified by the field, right? It is also, RDBMS is also similar to that. So but here we create a table here uh, the columns are called as attributes and the rows are called as a tuples and every table is identified by a unique table name formed between 1 to 30 alphanumeric characters and every column is identified by the unique column name and every column name should be created with the data type length okay so uh, with that said this uh, is an introduction and then we will in the next video we will talk about uh, how do we call this db2 and who all can use this right now let's talk about where this db2 can be run right so whenever you for example if you are using a skype right if you are using a skype so you will be having a question like where i can use the skype application so the can i skype installed in my laptop or uh, a desktop or i can i use it in a using a web url or uh, can i install this uh, desktop application that way right so similar to that so when we talk about uh, this db2 where we can use it so how we can uh, call this right so here this uh, the picture that it shows here the db2 can you can you call using a TSO batch program uh, that is using a COBOL program and you can call using a tools which have uh, all uh, which is there in the mainframe uh, that is QMF and DB2I DB2I is called as Spoofy and you can call DB2 using a CICS program and you can also call using DB2 provided utility okay so db2 application can be run in using a tso and cics uh, when we say run in foreground using qmf and db2i and you can uh, run this using cobol db2 application programming and also we can have a combination of cobol db2 cics and db2 utilities like a batch job which is used to load the data from a 
PS file to your tables and it is and also we can unload the data from a tables uh, to our files okay this is how we can call that uh, call or run the DB2 where we can run the DB2 Okay, now let's look at where this uh, DB2 SQL uh, can be used. Uh, when I say SQL, so we can divide it into two things. One is using an application program and one is other is using tools. So earlier in the previous video, we have discussed about how do we call this DB2, right? It's exactly, it's a continuation of that. So, so here what I'm trying to explain is uh, when you're trying to call the DB2, what you should have, you should have an, you should know the SQL query language. Using SQL query language, you can call the DB2. So this SQL code where you can use either you can write it in an application program or using a tools you can or using a help of tools you can do it. When I talk about the application program either you can write it in a batch that is using COBOL uh, DB2 or either and using an online where the CICS is used. And when I talk about the tools in the tools we can use a QMF and a DB2 that is spoofy. Tools will handle only the low, uh, low volume of a data just to verify like creating a table or just to test few records so that way we can use it and application programs handle the large volume of a, a data right so in uh, tools generally what we do is if if there is any error in a specific uh, a program or a job so instead of running the complete uh, uh, flow what we do is we will go to the specific tools and we try to retrieve uh, call that particular table and see and apply some functions or uh, some queries to get the data and see where the issue is then we go back to the program and then we uh, fix those particular changes okay so I hope now where we can use this uh, you, you, you are getting to know where we can use this DB2 right now let's understand uh, the hierarchy of a DB2 objects so in any database or any kind of a software either it can uh, Oracle or MS SQL or Sybase any anything any RDBMS uh, uh, things that you take uh, right so they will have a uh, database objects right so if you say Oracle, if you're working on Oracle, you will have an Oracle database objects, right? If you're working on SQL Server, you will have an uh, SQL Server object. Similarly, so now we are trying to understand how the hierarchy of these objects will be and what are the different kinds of objects. First will be the storage group. Then within a storage group, you will be having a database. Then you'll be having a table space. Then you'll be having a table. Again, table will have an index. And inside the table, you can have a columns from table you can create a views you can create aliases and you can create synonyms okay so these are the different objects will be coming across and uh, will in the next video i'll explain you what the, what is the role of a developer in the db2 and what is the role of a dba as well okay so who can create the storage groups who can create these tables who can create these indexes those all things that we will be discussing in the next video so far now let us understand the hierarchy of a db2 objects looks like this first we'll have a storage group database table space table and within a table space uh, within a database uh, single database you can have multiple table spaces so if you are working on a project a project a may use one table space project b can use uh, a, pro, uh, a different table space similarly they can be a different databases created for a different projects okay so that's the hierarchy of a db2 objects now let's talk about the roles of a developer and a dba so what could be the various roles when we are working on a, a db2 right so you might be wondering okay so i have learned so far cobol jcl c uh, vzam and i uh, have practiced a couple of things now db2 so do i need really need to learn all these and uh, i will be working on this yes i can say like maybe may not be there are couple of programmers maybe they may be they are working from almost 10 to 15 years only on the JCL side only writing the JCLs executing the JCLs monitoring the jobs or way or maybe they might have only used a COBOL programs 
right or there are set of programmers who has only worked on db2 cobol db2 and they might they might haven't worked on cics so it's a combination it depends on the project that you are working it is always better uh, to know uh, the complete concepts within the mainframe so so don't leave any of the concepts if you are completely new to the mainframe i request you to complete go in in detail about all the modules that i am explaining and if you are just trying to refresh also it will be uh, very much helpful the, all these videos to refresh whatever you have been learned several years ago or trying to upgrade your skill set uh, by watching these videos okay and as always i mentioned this point if you have any doubts and question please drop me a message or i mean you can uh, drop a message in this course and you can also uh, send me an email to the uh, email id that is mentioned okay so talking about the roles for the developer so whole he completely holds the responsibility of writing the application program which mainly handles with the data processing it can be like inserting the data into the table selecting uh, a table and applying uh, to verify validate how the data is being processed or to update the records within the table or and also deleting some records based on the condition so basically this will be the roles or responsibility of a developer okay so you will be writing a cobol db2 combination code which inserts the data into the table or which selects uh, retrieve some records from the table or you can update the table or it, you can sometime delete it okay now let's look at the role of a dba so role of a dba if you look at the once uh, earlier we have seen the db2 objects right so all the db2 objects that we have seen the hierarchy in all those phases dba will come into the picture okay the first thing comes is the uh, creating a storage space the storage group is nothing but it's essentially a all volumes creation so so for example when you purchase any of the laptop right so nowadays we are getting all the microsoft operating system hardware partitioning everything is getting ready by default right so earlier if you are purchasing the laptop 8 years or 9 years or maybe 5 years back before so you have to purchase a laptop you have to install the mic operating system then you have to divide the partition so that's how we used to do it right so so or we used to give to a specific engineer hardware engineer who used to install and he used to he used to ask us how many partitions you want what surface you want to install or how many users you wanted to create what all the access you want so that way we used to do it right in similar way so dba holds the db in the db2 side dba holds all the complete responsibility okay first initially we start with the storage groups so storage group is essentially the dash db volumes on which the db2 can allocate the data sets so for the next step is a da database it is nothing but it's a collection of a table space and the index spaces then within the table space space you will be page set that is to store the records for one or more tables so within the table space only you will be getting the table so what is a table again table contains uh, the rows and the columns so then again creating the index of the tables and can be unique or non give and creating a views aliases and synonyms this what do what are views views or nothing but uh, it's a part of the table this provides a means to create more meaningful name of a person working a table or a view they can also be used to place lengthy table names with a shorter name so with that said so these are the things that we can do i mean to say these will these were the different roles of a dba and the developer okay now let's look at the data types so within the db2 so what are the different data types that we can have here so data types are broadly divided into string type date time time type and another is a numeric type right so this would be the similar way if you are when you are learning any other uh, programming language so string type numeric type and date and type within the string you will be seeing a character data type and within the character uh, data type so you will be seeing char and var char and you also have graphics and within a date and time so you see a date you see a time stamp and you see a time 
and within the numeric you will be having integer again integer contains small and big integer and whereas decimal decimal and then floating point floating point also contains uh, single and double okay to store the large volume small occupy a smaller space and big occupy a larger space where you can store multiple uh, the length of the integer okay so these are the basic uh, data types you can say overall data types that we can use within the db2 now let's look at the simple example of how the data types looks so db2 data type so when you are declaring when you want to declare a four bytes of a numeric value within db2 you will be declaring it as an integer whereas within the whereas in cobol you will be declaring picture class s9 of 9 comp okay so that's how you declare small integer 2 bytes you'll be declaring it as a uh, s9 of 4 char 254 bytes you'll be declaring picture class x of n var char uh, if it is a 4046 bytes and uh, the size is 4046 bytes by, i mean integer uh, normally holds 4 bytes small int holds uh, 2 bytes and uh, character holds uh, 254 bytes and var char holds 4046 bytes integer when it converted to cobol data type it is a s9 of 9 comp and small integer when it is converted to cobol it is a s9 of 4 comp and character when it is converted to data uh, uh, this one x of n and var char it's a s9 of 4 comp for length and x of n for data so this is special here so again for time you have to define x of 8 for date x of 10 and for timestamp x of 26 let's see an example of how it looks let's take an employee number which has a numeric uh, which ho which which we wanted to have a five digits so you will be writing it as numeric of five so that it can hold five bytes of information of the employee number then COBOL variable should be declared in such a way like S9 of 5 okay usage COM3 and then next data birth data birth will be a uh, date WS data birth X of 10 and salary will be of numeric and it has two, de two decimal points 9 of 2 and WS salary PG class X9 of 7 version 9 of 2 then usage comp3 so you can see we are using a computational variables here so start time so picture class location so you can x of 10 marks uh, you can give s9 of 9 comp and a small int you can give uh, s9 of 4 as we mentioned integer when you are giving so you have to give s9 of 9 comp and duration uh, small int so you can give ws duration s9 of 4 comp and employee name var char of 70 so whenever you are using a var char it should it, it will have two fields one is a length and other is a text so for uh, employee text picture class x of 70 and length s9 of 4 usage comp right so this is how we go we are going to declare a variable so first we will practice uh, uh, database with uh, using tools and then we'll come go to the application programming so this is uh, that's all about the data types within the db2 and the next video will talk about the tools so that we can use in order to create the tables uh, or access uh, the data uh, i mean insert write update delete on all sql uh, operations